Once upon a time back in 2018, a little Shilleriana came into my collection. Turns out she was a Phalaenopsis Shilleriana, when in actual fact I ordered a Catlia Shilleriana. Well, fate would have it such that my Phalaenopsis Shilleriana is still in the collection, but the Catlia Shilleriana is not. The nursery made a mistake seeing as Phalaenopsis Shillerianas are so popular that when they saw Shilleriana, they thought Phalaenopsis, whereas I wanted Catlia Shilleriana. Having said that, I always said that when a mislabeled orchid comes into our collection and then she blooms, we can be disappointed. And also when you get the wrong orchid and not the one you wanted. And in hindsight, it would appear the orchid gods knew very well that the Catlia Shilleriana that I did eventually get was going to have Fusarium and that I needed a Phalaenopsis Shilleriana in my life because she is doing fabulously. So this video is for anybody that is watching it. Thank you so much for being here. Specifically though requested by Nina. Hey Nina. <laughs> no, I'm not talking to myself, even though I'm on my patio talking to myself. But no, this is for Nina because Nina watched a video that aired in April of 2022. It has been a long time. Anywho, in that video, I did an update on my attempt of keeping my Shilleriana leaves. And prior to that, I had reduced the pH of the Phalaenopsis Shilleriana down to 5.5, whereas what goes in my pot always starts at 5.8 and then my media will balance out the pH and raise it because my starting point in the pot with my Lekka is 8. So if I start at 5.8 you can imagine through the wicking process by the time the roots can absorb everything it kind of balances out to get to 6 to 6.5. This ensures that I have a pH swing in the pot doing it automatically for me and with that all the nutrients macro and micro nutrients are being absorbed. Now, my Shilleriana was constantly dropping leaves every time she started actively growing roots or actively growing another leaf and I would never get past three leaves. When she was much smaller, I was attempting for her to hold on to four leaves. Now, granted, it may not be necessary because she was a baby at the time and I was pushing her too hard too soon. Having said that, the experiment that I did with lowering her pH did her absolutely no harm. So I focused heavily on calcium and magnesium in order for her to keep her structures because calcium is one of those nutrients that is immobile and and it would appear that a Phalaenopsis shilleriana loves her calcium. Now, in 2023, I focused heavily on just calcium nitrate, not calcium and magnesium, to even push more calcium into her. But I kept the pH at around 5.8 because I was getting tired of having one orchid that needed to be pH lower than the rest of the gaggle. Anyway, it worked out beautifully. Only recently did she lose one leaf. When I say recently I would say it was approximately three months ago. So I was a bit of a panic stations because I had run out of calcium nitrate and I went back to calcium and magnesium which is also not a bad thing because in my low light levels the magnesium is obviously fantastic to support with photosynthesis especially with low light levels but I am going back to calcium proper only with my other fertilizer of course because it would appear that she is losing the next leaf down. Not that this is unusual, but I would like to try and avoid that. And if you have followed my channel from the beginning, I think that you will be amazed at how big the leaves have gotten. Now, mine is from the Philippines, from the island of Luzon. There is another variety of Phalaenopsis shilleriana that comes from Malaysia. They are automatically much much larger Phalaenopsis shillerianas. So we have two types. Mine will never get those long leaves, but this is already a marginal improvement, a great size jump from when she first arrived. And as per usual, it's a windy day. When this orchid blooms, it's always a windy day. Anyway, I hope you enjoy some of the pictures I'm putting in just so that you can enjoy the blooms with me, even though you cannot sense the fragrance. Oh my goodness, it is a cloudy day, but I am enveloped with this beautiful rose fragrance that is absolutely divine. It is strong. It's not as 
sweet rose fragrance. It's like there's a touch of lemon in the back notes. It's possible that I'm picking her up differently year on year, simply because as she matures, she also gets a stronger fragrance. So this time I'm getting a beautiful rose fragrance, but there's a little tang of lemon to it as well. It's a teeny tiny bit sharp, but it counterbalances the sweetness of the rose fragrance so beautifully. So Nina, calcium, what I have discovered in the last five years since I've had her, this orchid loves her calcium. If you can't get calcium nitrate or anybody who's watching, focus on the combination of calcium and magnesium. Get calcium into this orchid in order for her to be able to cope with growing the roots, the beautiful silver roots, as well as growing the leaves. In 2023, my calcium nitrate quantity was 300 parts per million, not including what I fertilized her with, which was 500 parts per million <laughs> of an orchid fertilizer that I use. Orchid specific, very similar to MSU. 500 parts per million for an orchid that doesn't have that many structures to support. And then on top of that, 300 parts per million of calcium nitrate. This orchid is hungry to say the least. And when it came to calcium and magnesium, I went with 500 parts per million because the calcium is a little bit less in percentage in my product as opposed to me going in with calcium exclusively. Ah, behold, the wind has stopped. It's beautiful. And I'm pHing at 5.8. Once again, let my pot do the balancing out. If you're thinking that, okay, I'm gonna pH at 5.8 to get my orchid to get calcium, please know that this is specific for my case. In order for any orchid to absorb calcium, your nutrient solution has to have a pH of 6.5 and higher. Now that is when the optimal calcium uptake is for any orchid. The reason I go 5.8, just in case you missed it, is because my pot without anything has a pH of 8, which is far too high for any effective nutrient absorption. For that reason, I go down to 5.8. If you have a normal pot that is somewhat neutral, please know that your pH should be around 6.5 of the nutrient solution you put into your orchid pot, and then the calcium will be absorbed. I have a feeling that this orchid is going to absorb this leaf. I have a feeling I'm going to be a little bit too late getting calcium into her. It's going to be all right. I now have calcium back on the patio and I will link the video when it airs as to how I go about testing a new product. Not because I'm testing the component of the product, but a product coming into your collection new. Even though you've used something before similar, but this time it's a different brand. I'm going to link that video once it airs in the description because there is a certain process you should be doing every single time you get a new brand that you want to use for your orchids. And we will be talking through those steps. And I'm not sure when that video comes out. It's just a heads up. It will be linked in the description. So check out the description in case you're seeing this at a later date. While she is in spike now, I am still giving her a lot of calcium and magnesium because I am trying to stop her from losing that leaf. And I will continue to give her calcium and magnesium. I'm not giving her regular fertilizer just yet until I see active growth. But in order for her to support the leaf that I don't want her to lose, I'm hoping she won't lose, she may lose. I'm going to continue with calcium and magnesium. Now, if you have any questions with regards to anything else I may have missed about this orchid and her care, let me know in the comments. I'll be happy to elaborate. Just wanted to update you on the current status quo of my beautiful Phalaenopsis shilleriana. And I'm thanking the orchid gods that they knew what was going to happen. And it's because of them we can feature this orchid on the patio. Like I said, sometimes mislabeled orchids can be annoying. You see the blooms and you go, that's not what I ordered. But sometimes there's a reason an orchid comes into our collection by mistake. Sometimes we may never know why an orchid comes into our collection by mistake. But in my case, I have my answers. I would so appreciate it if you would give this video a like. Thank you so much for that. If you think that this information was valuable enough to share around, that helps out a lot as well. Not just my channel, but also whoever else gets to see this video video and please subscribe. Consider yourself welcome to the gaggle. Thank you so, so much for watching. Have yourself a fabulous day on the condition though that you please stay safe. Take care. Bye.